So the next stage of our synthesizer is to add part of the patch which controls the volume by velocity. So the simplest way to do this is just to create a gain slider. So I'm going to hit button in and then type in gain tilde. And then I'm going to patch this in between the saw tilde and the live gain slider. And they both control volume, um, but the live gain slider will be controlled by the user. But for this one, I'm just going to control it from the velocity output. So when the velocity is on, we'll set the fader up. And when it turns off, then it will turn the fader down. So again, let's lock the patch, hold down command. I'm going to turn up this fader. If I hit Backspace, then it resets it. And now if I play a note. Okay. It's quite sensitive when it comes to velocity. But we can now control the volume of our note. And also more importantly, the sound isn't going constantly, only when I play a note on the keyboard. So what we're going to do now is to add a filter. So let's unlock the patch and I'm going to create another new object. So hit button N and I'm going to type in SVF tilde. And then I'm going to patch it in after the saw tilde object. So into the left inlet and then the left outlet will go into this gain tilde object here. Okay, and then what we're going to do is to connect up a couple of controls into the middle inlet and the right inlet. If I hover my mouse over, you can see that is the cutoff frequency control, and this inlet here is the resonance control. So rather than using number boxes, we will use some user interface objects such as dials. So just click and drag. And I'm going to connect the output of that dial into the frequency inlet, that middle inlet. Let's call up the inspector again. Come down to name, cut off, and we can copy and paste. So select over, command C, and then command V. Float is fine. And again, in terms of the range, well, this is going to be a frequency control. So from 20, let's say up to 10,000, we'll be fine for what we're doing here. And unit style, hertz. So now lock my patch by holding down command. And now we've got a frequency control for my filter. And then I'm also going to copy that across. and change the values to this. This is resonance. This time I'll just call this res, otherwise resonance won't fit on. And equally you're going to need to change the range here. So this resonance goes between 0 and 1. How do I know that? Well, as I hover my mouse over that inlet, it says resonance between 0 and 1. So come back here. And just call it float. Okay, so now if I hold it down a note, we can filter it, add a little bit of resonance. So we can now control the sound using a filter. What I'm going to do is save my patch. So command S and then just call this PB synth. And you can now see the device window updated. We can tidy this up later on. But what I'm going to do is just close that down for now and also show you how we can access these controls from the automation. If we just jump over to the arrange page, here we go, PB synth, and then here's cutoff frequency and the number box I called pitch. 
as well as resonance and there's also a live gain tilde at the moment so we can that's basically the slider which as we can see down here is just called live gain so we need to adjust that as well so whichever user interface objects we add to the patch they will be displayed as long as they're max for live user interface objects they will appear in the automation lane and that also means that they get stored when storing a preset as well good so let's come back and continue editing our patch so first thing i want to do is to name this so i'm going to right click choose inspector okay because the sidebar wasn't open it comes up in this floating window so we can call that output And actually, I don't want um, this frequency control here to be available, and I don't want this pitch to be available either. So to take that out, come down here, parameter, visibility, automated, and stored, I can basically switch that to hidden, and I'll do exactly the same with this one. And then we obviously need to save, so Command S, you saw the device updated. And now back out to Ableton, and here we go. We've only got cutoff output and resonance to automate, and those are the only the parameters which will be stored as well within a preset. So what we could do now is just tidy this patch up. So I can select over those comments and delete them. Equally, we don't really need to see any of that. It's a very basic synth. We've got cutoff and resonance and an output column. And we can literally just move everything around like that to tidy it up. Within Max for Live, you've also got a presentation mode. Okay, so if I had to save this. Well, yes, we've now got a smaller space, but you can still see these cables. So quite a useful way to make things look much neater is to make use of presentation mode. So what I'm going to do is select over these controls here and come down here and choose Add to Presentation. And then I'm going to click on this button here, Presentation Mode, and save it. Okay, it doesn't automatically default into presentation mode, so to do this, Pattern Inspector opening presentation and that basically means again now if I save you can see it's now looking much neater without those cables and you can toggle between your patching mode and presentation mode simply by clicking this button here so this is a simple synth which we have created if I just move across here essentially we use the note in object which accepts incoming MIDI data and we then convert the pitch of that into frequency using the mtov object and connect that into a saw tilde object and the function of this object is basically to generate sawtooth waves and it will set to whatever frequency is coming in we've then routed that through an svf tilde object which is a state variable filter and we've controlled that object using the cutoff and resonance control here and set the parameters of that within the inspector window this is then connected into a gain slider and the gain slider accepts an audio signal in its left inlet which is then routed through as well as an int or a number and that basically controls the gain so if i adjust this number here you can see that going up and down okay 127 being uh, unity the signal then continues out of the fader and through the output fader before going to the plug out. So that's our simple synth. Don't worry, I've moved the position of these, but actually if we jump back to presentation mode, you see it still remembers the position of those. If you wanted to leave yourself a little note, then sometimes quite useful for unlock the patch. Type in a comment by pressing button C first, and then this is my synth. And then we can position that anywhere we want to on the screen and then lock and save. Every two weeks in the course, uh, an assignment is set. So once I've done my assignment, which is essentially a track, I upload it 
for my tutor to download and he sends me back a DVR which is a direct video response. It's a video produced by your tutor um, that is sent to you personally every couple of weeks while you're, you're studying, giving you immediate feedback on your production. It's something that enables the students to have a one-to-one -one connection with their tutor. You see all of the mouse movements and any parameter changes made by your tutor. It's kind of like sitting in the studio over their shoulder watching what they're doing whilst they work. And I think this kind of steel can sound is brilliant. I mean, that's, that's a real kind of hook of the track, this. Maybe let's just try uh, recording something in. The response that the tutor gives is completely tailored to the student's style of music or the level that they're at as well. So it might be nice to spice up this drum track by adding a delay. And you can see I've put one here in the return of the drum rack. And uh, if we just apply that to the clap now, See, it has a really nice effect. If you want to check out the whole range of online courses, go to pointblankonline.net.